everyone, I'm Celeste and welcome to my YouTube channel. The month of October is still Halloween time, so we are celebrating with the 31 days of Halloween. In today's video, I'm actually going to be showing you some really quick and easy DIY headless chokers. The one that I have here is just a basic plain choker, but we're going to amp it up and make it so crazy. This is actually going to be a lot of fun and really easy and just like a quick afternoon and you can pair this with a few different things and maybe do even a really cool makeup look to make you look really dead. So that's perfect for Halloween time. Minimal effort, big impact. So if you guys are new to my channel, hi hi, welcome. I am Celeste Orchid. I am a cosplayer of 15 years and I've won Best in Show, Best Masters, and Best Craftsmanship. So if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel for more cosplay content. So let's go ahead and get into this very easy tutorial and I hope you guys like it and share it with me when you're done. <laughs> I will be making the base necklace three times for all my tutorials. Just wanted to tell you that as a disclaimer. For the base choker, you'll need elastic beading string, tape, E6000, or universal glue, and beads. Make sure your beads are big enough to go through the stretchy string. Mine are 4.5 millimeters if that helps. These are seed beads. Wrap the string around your neck to find out how much to cut. You'll need to cut about two inches out from where you measured. Take a piece of tape and wrap it around one of the ends to keep the beads from falling off. You don't want it to be a knot, so use the tape. Begin sewing all your beads until an inch from the end. Carefully take both ends and tie them into a double knot. Use the universal glue or E6000 to secure the knot from falling out. Once the glue dries, cut off the excess string and ta-da! Your base necklace is done! For the next necklace, we are going to use the same necklace base like I mentioned earlier. For the materials, you're going to need flat head pins, needle nose pliers, and more beads. Using the choker you've just made, add beads to the flat head pins. Once it's full, create a loop at the top, but don't close it. Not yet. Hook the pin around the choker and then close it. You don't need to hook it into the beads on the choker, just the string. Repeat these steps as many times as you'd like. Overall, uh, for this one, I created three pins in total for this look.
For the final choker, it's a bit more advanced than the simpler designs. For this, you'll definitely want a bead needle. These are extremely thin and you can find them in the beading aisle and they are difficult to get the string through. So just be patient and keep trying to get the string through the eye hole. To begin this project, begin with creating a threaded beading needle. And I'm saying this slowly because it is a tongue twister for me, weirdly. Sew through one of the side beads and loop back through the string creating an anchor on the bead. This is going to be your starting point. Begin sewing beads on the thread. I only added a small amount of beads before I looped it back into one of the beads that's on the choker to create a loop. Obviously, I just said loop like twice in a row on one sentence. I found that it was extremely hard sewing back through the choker beads because I was using a regular sewing needle. This is why I'm advising you to use a beading needle. Yes, they are a little bit longer, but it will help in the long run for how many loops that you'll make in the future. You want to keep adding beads on the string, and once you have enough stringed on, string it back through another bead on the choker. The loops really vary, but the first loops that I made were really small, and then I slowly started to get bigger as I made my way across across the choker. I didn't want this choker to go all the way around my neck, so I stopped a quarter way around. This can vary depending on your neck size. I still had a lot of string left over, so I went back to the left or to the right, depending on which way you started, and I started making bigger loops that hung lower than the first loops. This way, it's more exaggerated and looks like dripping blood. There's no wrong way to go about this, so you can have as many loops in different sizes and different shapes with different beads and just keep going with it. When you're done, go through a bead at the top of the choker and begin making knots around the bead. Once you're done making knots, go through one of the beads and the choker and then cut off the excess. The reason why we wanted to go back through some of the beads before cutting it off is to hide the string. This was <coughs> don't keep me. I'm just kidding. I've actually been making lots of bloody jewelry recently, and I don't mean bloody as in like I don't like it and it's a negative connotation. No, I really like the idea of having something simple and that I can wear every day and it could be very fun. This is actually really fun and easy to make. You can layer these multiple times, kind of like bracelets. This is actually a really easy DIY to make. A few of them are pretty hard. I think the hardest one that took the longest time was this one, and that's because I wasn't working with an original seed bead needle, and I had a lot of fun making these. Make sure to grab the right nylon cording and use some E6000 or some universal glue at the edge here to make sure that it's really nice and secure. Earlier while I was testing these, one of them did pop and all of my hard work came undone. So please be smart before going and not putting any glue on. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below and check out some of my 31 days of Halloween videos here. Check out what YouTube says you should be watching. If you have any other problems, you know, just contact me on my social media. So remember to stay spooky and I will see you in a future video. Bye!